Cool, what's up guys? Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com. So in this video, we're gonna continue our series on getting started in Fusion 360 by taking the toolbox that we created and creating printable plans from it. If you have any questions about anything we talk about in this video, feel free to leave them down below. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so if you haven't modeled your toolbox, I will link to video one in this series in the notes down below so that you can follow along and have something to create plans from. But now that we've done this, what we want to do is we want to create some documentation of this object. And so to do that, we want to jump out of the design workspace and we want to go down into the drawing workspace. And specifically in this case, we want to create a drawing from this design. So we're going to click on the option for from design right here. That's going to pop up a little window over here where you're going to be able to create a new um, drawing using this object. And so we want to go ahead and we want to use the full assembly from this tool. And you can set things like the page size. So if you wanted this to be more of like a letter page or something like that, you can pick that from this list. Notice how there's some larger page sizes as well. But in this case, we'll go ahead and we'll go with an 11 by 17. And we'll click on OK. And when you do this, what this is going to do is this is going to create a drawing from your design. And so notice how when this first pops up, what this is doing is this is allowing me to place the base view of my drawing. And so that's basically where the view of the object is going to be on your sheet. So in this case, for example, I'm assuming I'm probably going to have a couple different views of this toolbox on one sheet. So we're just going to click right here in order to set our base view. Now, when we set our base view, notice what that's going to do is that's going to create a view of your object in this drawing sheet right here. And note that you can move that around, right? So if I click on this object and then I just click on like a point to point, I can click and I can move this like this to place it in other places on my page like this. And so notice how now what I can do is I can double click on this in order to pop up the drawing view function. And that's gonna allow me to do things like setting the orientation of my view, right? So say that I wanted this to show me the side of my toolbox like this, I can go ahead and I can click on this orientation, I can click on a top orientation right here, um, and I can also set the style of this toolbox. Right, So if I wanted this to look like the actual wood of the toolbox, I could click um, on the shaded with hidden edges in here. You can also set this to just have visible edges in here. You can have it do um, hidden and visible edges. It just kind of depends on the style that you're going for. But let's say that I wanted this particular view over here to take up more of this sheet. Well, what I can do is I can click in here and I can adjust the scale of my object. So instead of one to 10, let's say I was to type in one to five and then tab out of this box. Well now, notice how this gets bigger. So you can use the scale function in order to set um, the scale that this is going to be printed at on your sheet. And so the cool thing about this is this whole thing is going to get printed to scale um, on your drawing. Now, we're not gonna to worry too much about these other settings for right now. What I wanna do now is I want to use the move function and I want to just kind of move this down on my sheet. And notice how when I move this around, I get um, kind of some snapping in here. Now, one thing I'm not getting that I kind of wish that I was getting was some inferencing to like the middle of the page or something like that. And so now what I wanna do is I'm gonna click on the option for okay. And what I have is I have a top down view of my object. And so now that I have a top down view of my object, what I want to do is I want to add some dimensions. And so you can access dimensions using this dimension function right here, right? And there's a number of different tools in here for creating your dimensions. In this case, we're just going to go with kind of the overall dimension function. And notice what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to mouse over different points and click in order to set a dimension. And so I can click in multiple different places like this in order to set dimension lines in my model, right? So I can use this in order to add all of these different dimensions in here so I can see what the measurements of my object are. Okay, so now let's talk just for a second about editing these dimensions that we've added, right? So we've got dimensions in here and you can click in here and you can move them around 
right? That's really simple. Um, you can just use these different points in here in order to move these. Note that if you do have a number of these in here and they're kind of on top of each other. So let's say this was created right here, there is actually an option to select those multiple different dimensions. There's an option for arrange dimensions and actually you select them after the fact, but you can set this so that it'll automatically create some spacing between them. So you can use the arrange dimensions function in order to kind of stack multiple different dimensions together in a way that makes sense. But um, there's two things to know about this. The first is any new dimensions are actually going to be driven by your document settings over here on the right hand side of your page. So if you click on this, notice how you can set the units of your dimension. You can set what format they're in, right? So these were created as decimal inches, but say I want any new dimensions to be fractional inches, I can click on the option for fractional. Um, and then I can also adjust things like if it adds the unit abbreviation after the fact, um, other things like that. So this is going to basically allow me to set what new dimensions are going to look like in my scene. So now if I add new dimensions, they're gonna be in fractional inches. So if I click in here, notice how this is now in fractional inches. Now, one thing that this has not done, and I don't know if there's a way to do this or not. If there is, I have not found it. But what this didn't do is this didn't go back and change your original dimensions in here. It just changes your new ones. And so to edit an individual dimension, because you're probably gonna have to come in here and fix this manually. I think if anybody knows a better way to do this, leave a comment below, let me know. But to edit individual dimensions, you can just double click on them and it's gonna pop up this window over here. And you can adjust things like if it's decimal or fractional, other things like that. Notice when you click in here, you can add custom text as well. So if I type outside of what's in the brackets here, and I type in custom text, and I click on close, notice how custom text is going to be at the end. If I want to get rid of that, I can just double click in here and delete it back out. But you can edit these individually um, using this setting right here. If anyone knows how I can select multiple different dimensions and edit them, let me know. Like I said, I have not been able to find that, but I would love to be able to do that. You can select multiple different dimensions and move them in and out, but I've not seen a way to either have them adjust to my new dimensional units or have them actually have me be able to edit multiple different dimensions at once, but maybe you know a way to do that. So leave a comment below and let me know. Once we're done, we've got a pretty good plan view of this toolbox. And I maybe wanna set this to be just visible edges like this, um, just cause I think it's a little bit easier to see. Now, say that we wanted to add another viewport in here. Well, what we can do is we can just click on the option for base view and we can set another view. And so in this case, I'm gonna set this view to be an isometric view. So we're gonna click in here, maybe pick this isometric view right here. And for this, I'm just gonna take it and kind of put it in the corner. So I'm just gonna move it up here just so I have kind of a 3D view of my toolbox. But then I can go ahead and I can create a front view. So I'm gonna click in here. I'm gonna set my scale to one to five, maybe. Maybe one to six like this and click on OK. OK, and so we'll go ahead, we'll add another view right here. And this will just be maybe like a left view. So you can see this object in here. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set this one to be maybe a one, two, seven right here. And so now we've got some additional views in here that we can dimension real quick. And so notice how with this dimension function, you can not only set the dimension between points, right? So if I do that, right here, I can set the dimension between points, but I can also mouse over an edge. When I mouse over an edge, it's going to give me a dimension of an edge aligned with that edge right here. So I can go ahead and I can give the dimension or I can add the dimension of this curve right here. I can also add a dimension for the radius of this object like this. So dimensioning is actually really easy um, inside a Fusion 360. Okay, and so this is one way that you can do this. There is another way that we can do this though. And so what I wanna do is I wanna add a new sheet. 
So you can actually do that by mousing over the bottom of the page right here and clicking on the plus button. Notice what that does is that creates an additional sheet inside of the set. And so say that you wanted to have this view, but you wanted to have those kind of top and side views more aligned with your object. Well, what you can do is you can create what's known as a projected view. And so to create a projected view, what you need to do is you need to start with a base view in your model, right? So let's create a top view right here. We're gonna go ahead and set this to visible edges. We'll go ahead and set the scale to like one to six like this, right? We're gonna go ahead and click on okay. And we've gone ahead and we've created this view. We'll notice how there's an option in here for projected view. And so when I create the option for projected view, what that's going to do is that's gonna project a view from the side of your object like this. And so notice how I can move my mouse and I can click in order to create all of those different projected views. But then once you're done, you can click on the checkbox right here. And it's created this view or these views in a way that they're actually aligned with this object, right? And so one thing that we might wanna do before we do that is we might wanna rotate this object 90 degrees. So this is the rotate function, but I'm just gonna set a base point or we're just gonna rotate this 90 degrees. We're gonna move it back up. And so then we can create our projected view here and our projected view here, like this. So depending on what you're looking for, you can kind of set this up however you want, but then we could just add our dimensions. So just like this. And then once we're done, we're good to go. Now, sometimes you wanna add some annotation in here. That's pretty easy to do. You can just use the text function and just kind of click and drag a box but you can use this in order to add text in your scene really quickly. And then down here at the bottom, you do have your project um, with your titles. That is just going to align basically with, um, that's basically gonna align with the file structure and naming that you have of this model, right? So in this case, this is in my Justin Projects folder and the title is Toolbox version two. Now you can come in here and adjust this, right? So you could call this toolbox and you could title it something different. So you could call this tool box elevations, right? And you can rename that sheet. And then when you're done, now this has that additional information in here and you can add extra things in here if you want to um, using the text functions. But then once you're done, say that you wanted to print this off, you could just go up to file and you could do a print and that's gonna pop up a little window that looks like this. And in this case, I wanna make sure that my orientation is set up properly. You can set your paper size right here, but then you can set whatever your printer is. In this case, I don't have a printer set up, so I could just do a print to PDF, um, but then I could set either the current sheet or if I click on all sheets, it's going to print both of those sheets. Note that those are going to get printed to scale, which is pretty cool, um, so that you can actually like measure these and work with these. But say I was to print this, say that I was to print this current sheet, you just print it. And so when you print that document off, it's gonna look like this. It's going to be printed to scale, right? So this is actually going to be scaled one to six like this. And you've got this document ready to go. So if you need to create and print plans in Fusion 360, it's actually really easy. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about anything we talked about. In the next video, we're gonna talk about um, making your models a little bit smarter in the way that they adjust. Make sure you click that subscribe button so that you don't miss that. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.